Hi, everybody, and welcome back to Cats Track. Thank you for subscribing, liking, and sharing this with your friends. Today's episode is with my dear friend, Tanya Eklund. Tanya was born in Camrose, Alberta, and she tells me that her loved ones are the anchor of her life. She's married to her amazing husband, Chad, of 13 years, and she's always saying that she's married a man that every girl dreams of. Oh, that's so nice. Oh, they have two daughters, Ophelia and Ruby, and they are shining stars in her life most days, she says. <laughs> Funny. Besides her loved ones, Tanya's passionate about living life to the fullest, her career, fitness, and helping others. She does things in her life that make her happy and bring much joy. Tanya also said that fitness is her happy place. Ooh, do I ever understand that one? Friends, you'll find her full bio attached. Tanya, thank you so much for joining us today. Catherine, thank you so much for having me. I'm absolutely honored to be your guest. Oh, I'm honored. I'm glad you're here. Thank you. Are you ready for the questions we sent you? I am ready. Awesome. Okay. Why do you do what you do? Well, I think I just fell into what I do many years ago by accident. And uh, I was in university and kind of disenchanted uh, in the academic process and real estate presented itself. And so here I am just over 20 years later. Yes, I started when I was 12. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, and I do what I do because it's my passion. I, I think when I started real estate, I, I thought it was just going to be for a few years to see if I really wanted to pursue a law degree. And then it just kind of continued into this blossoming career. And it is truly my passion. I live, eat and breathe real estate. I, I love what I do. I love helping people. And I love solving problems. And, uh, and so that's what I do, what I do. It's a passion. I wouldn't be doing it if I didn't love it. Yeah. That, and you know what? It shines right through, Tanya. From the time I met you, this is your vocation. It's how you service your clients. And, and, and you don't forget the people who refer business to you. You're so mm -hmm. kind and generous. And, and for people to close that loop, I think a lot of businesses, I, from my experience, miss that really important mm -hmm. part. To go back and thank the person or organization that referred in the first place, that's mm -hmm. major. And that is mm -hmm. sticky. Everybody remembers yes. you. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> awesome. What about your top three things that you want to share with us today? Well, I think like life is so crazy. And uh, for me, it's about finding joy. And joy is means different things to different people. What brings you joy might be different than what brings me joy. But along my journey into womanhood and, and adulthood, I have learned that being selfish is okay. And I think as women, especially, um, well, and as, as men, to be fair, um, we sometimes forget that when we're parents, that our happiness, and as wives or husbands, that our happiness is very important. Because if we can't be happy, and if we can't show up for ourselves, then we can't show up for other people in our lives. It's like, you know, the, the old analogy that when, when you're in a plane, and it's going down, you have to put on your oxygen before you help other people. And I've always been a huge proponent of ensuring that even though I'm in a marriage to a man I love, and even though I'm a mother, and even though I'm a boss and a career woman, that I still have to make sure that I do the things in life that bring me joy. And I remember uh, on an old episode of Oprah that Lance Armstrong's wife came on and spoke, and it was shortly after the demise of their marriage. And she said, you know what, her life became Lance's life for so many years and raising their family. And so she stopped doing the things that were important to her, like doing yoga, going to the gym, seeing her girlfriends, going for a walk, doing some traveling with her friends. And so in that process, she lost who she was. Mm. And this was probably 10 years ago that I watched this, but that always rang true to me. So when there are days where maybe I could choose to hang out with my daughter or where I could choose to um, uh, be there for somebody in their lives. I choose myself because my workouts are important to me. My friends are important to me. And so those are the things that bring me joy. So when I go home at the end of the day and when I take Sundays off, I have no resentment and I can show up for the people in my life because I've taken care of myself first mm -hmm. and foremost. Cool. And so that is something in my life that I am a huge proponent of is balance, 
but making sure that you don't forget about you because mm-hmm. it's really easy to show up for everyone in your life and not do your workout and not see your friends and not do the things that are, are, are important to you. Mm-hmm. Isn't that true? Do you mind if I just stay on that for a second? Yes. In, in my age group, so I'm 56 this year, it's absolutely true that uh, a lot of the females that I grew up with will have said to me just well, in the last five years, especially because they're at that age where it's like, wow, I gave up my whole life to give it to him and I did it for the children and now I'm lost. And wow, I find that so, first of all, really, really sad. And my heart hurts for them because they, you're right, they lost themselves along the way. And that now at 55 or whatever age that is now, and now look at it, how do you build from there? Tough to do. They're Mm -hmm. doing it, but man, now they're they're trying to figure out who they are as the starting point. Oh, it's very hard. Mm -hmm. So I'm glad that you've got a really good hold on that. And it's no surprise you do. And it's also what, (laughs) The, how you show up in the world. That's how we see you too. It's like, Hey, I got this. It's awesome. Uh, well, thanks Catherine. Well, yeah. And, and I, I, I do love life. I have a zest for life. I love my life. It's, it's perfectly imperfect and not every day is a good day. And we, you know, we, we all have our days and I have my days, especially in this environment, but I do know what brings me joy and what allows me to show up for the other people in my life. It's awesome. Nice. And yeah, and uh, number two, I would say, um, is the ability to say no. And that is really tough, because I think um, we often want to be all things to all people. And I have learned also, uh, you know, especially probably in the last 10 years, that saying no is okay. And my husband he's very wise. I, he said to me a couple of years ago when I really didn't want to disappoint someone, someone I highly respect came to me and asked me to be on a committee on her board. And I, this person is so near and dear to me. I have so much respect for her. And I remember sitting at native tongues with her and she's like, I'm going to, you know, I want to ask you to do something. And right away I was like, yes, I'll do it because it was her. And she says, well, just wait. And then she shared with me what it was. And I'm thinking, wow, this is a huge commitment. So I said, you know what, I'm going to go home and I'm going to think about it. So I talked to Chad because it was going to be some extracurricular time that would have taken me away from my family. And um, he said, well, honey, all I can tell you is when you say yes to someone, what else are you going to say no to in your life? And I was like, a light bulb went off and I was like, right. Yeah. And so I'm going through all of the things in my life that do take time, but that mean a lot to me, my EO, my entrepreneurial organization, my Mm -hmm. fitness, my friends, my family. And there wasn't really a lot of time in my life to take on another task to take on, you know, even though it was for a good cause and for somebody that I love. And so I called her up a few days later, a week later. And I said, you know, I, I'm really sorry. And it was so hard for me to say, but when I, when I said no and got it off my chest, I was like, Oh, thank goodness. Because when would I have find time to do something like this? And so I think we, we oftentimes are yes, people. Yes, Mm -hmm. I'll do this. Yes, I can show up for you. But I truly believe that if I can't do something a hundred percent and wholeheartedly that, that I should say no. And so The other thing I've learned is saying no, when even it's hard, or even at times when you want to say yes. Yeah, it's not good. That's good advice. Thank you, Tanya. And uh, probably the, the, the third is, and I see this so much in my business right now, and it's heartbreaking, and it's a big part of my business. um, But it's, it's about divorce. And, you know, I, I met with multiple couples. So more than two (laughs) in the last two weeks. And, you know, when I meet with people, I always ask, you know, what is your happily ever after? You know, what, what are we doing after? And I actually stopped asking that. What is your happily ever after? Because I am, I reach people sometimes at their, their most raw state at their most vulnerable state in a time that isn't happy. It's not about starting a, a family together and buying a house. I always say I help bring people together and I help people move apart. And so there's this, this sense of tenderness that you have to have. And so I 
it's really been at the top of my mind that now more than ever, the relationships that we have with our partners and our spouses um, is so important. And it's, it's the second to me most important thing outside of making sure I'm happy is making sure the health of my relationship is happy. And I'm very blessed. I married a great husband and he's an amazing father, but that doesn't mean that we don't have to work on our marriage. It doesn't mean that we don't have to have check-ins. And I remember at the start of the last recession in 2015, um, you know, my, I, my husband's in energy and there were three to four years that were very difficult for him and his Mm -hmm. company. I mean, they went from 120 people to 60 people and we're very Mm -hmm. lucky they didn't have to close their doors. And so when we went into this, call it this prolonged recession and at the beginning of COVID, I remember saying to Chad, Chad, let's have a check-in. Let's just say, you know, how are you doing today? How am I doing today? How was your day? And because if you don't know, if you don't ask, you don't know, you just kind of go in on in life, assuming that things are okay, because you're not talking about them. And so we decided to do a family check-in. And so we do that at the end of every day at the dinner table. And we ask each other how each of our days was. Now I have a four and seven year old. So (laughs) it's uh, obviously maybe not in as in depth as pillow talk that Chad and I would have later. But what it's done is it's helped us get things out, help us understand where each other's at. Um, And so we make the conscious effort as a couple to um, uh, just have that check in. And that's made a a really just, I think, not even necessarily a difference, but it's helped us maintain a healthy marriage and relationship throughout this process, because Mm. I don't ever want to be in the position of where a lot of my clients are today. And that is unfortunately just the norm in our society. Mm -hmm. I think, you know, I don't know what the divorce rate is in Canada now, but you have kids, you know, when you take your kids to school, you probably have more separated couples than you do married. Yeah. And, uh, you know, and so it's just, it's, again, I don't have a perfect marriage. I don't have a perfect life. But the third thing is just as a reminder for couples and partners to have that check in. Mm, That's really good advice, Tanya. I've had many relationships in my life. (laughs) And uh, the one that I've been with now for a year and a half, I guess. And we at the end of the day, we do that as well. We do highlights and lowlights. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it works. I love it. Yeah. It does. And I mean, we do best day and toughest day with our daughters at the dinner table. Nice. And uh, it's, it's always so funny, the things that they, they come <laughs> <I> up with. <bet. laughs> my my four year old said to me, I she she mentioned her day and she seemed sad. And I said, well, well, what was the worst day of your life? And she's like, this little boy, she's like, I don't think Finn is my friend anymore. <laughs> I'm like, why not? And it was because of like some little thing that he said. And then the next day we asked her, what was the best part of your day? And she's like, Finn's my friend again. Oh. <laughs> so, I mean, it's all, it's all relative. To, for, yeah, for absolutely. Your age, right? <laughs> but it's just so good to have that check-in. I agree. That's great advice. Thank you. And what about on the new frontier or good news story that you'd like to share? Well, I, I, again, kind of going back to um, where our our world is today. And uh, I think everyone is under stress, you know, um, stress. I mean, I remember back in March and April, I went into crises mode because we didn't know if it was Ebola (laughs) and we were going to be dropping like flies. And so um, I laid off you know, all of my staff and temporarily laid off and then ended up bringing everyone, you know, back in June on again. And um, I love that you are doing this because I think it sheds a spotlight into local people's lives and kind of what they're doing and the good things. And so during that, um, we were still doing podcasts um, and we had pre-recorded a bunch of podcasts, but I have a podcast called Bow, which is called Voice of Women. And it's about Uh, women sharing their real life stories to empower other women. And I I think right now what I'm seeing in the world is, yes, there's a lot of um, heartache. There's a lot of stress in our lives. There's a lot of shame going on, shaming in this cancel culture. And that's really concerning to me. I, Mm -hmm. I, that scares me that we've become this society that thinks it's okay to do that. Um, And so I, 
I think the good news for me in my life is finding the good news. And there is so much good news going on locally within our city, within our province, but the me mainstream media tends to focus on only the bad news. We tend to focus on yeah. how many new cases of COVID and how many deaths there are instead of really digging deep into the numbers and looking on all, all, all of the great statistics. I agree. And so the good news is we have good news and we just have to find it. And so I've really, uh, on those days where I've, I've even, you know, had my doubts and, oh my gosh, like what's our world coming to and what's it gonna be like for my children? I have found a platform to focus on that is that is bringing a lot of good news and shedding light into entrepreneurs, people within our city that are just killing it in their industries, whether they're employees, whether they're uh, executives or, or owners of their company. And so we we have to we may have to look for it and we may have to dig a little deeper, but there's a lot of really great things going on in Alberta and. Now more than ever, I have the sense of hope. I have a sense of optimism and I truly feel that. I wake up every day and I choose to find optimism and or have optimism and have hope. And I think if we can as a society look for that and not just focus on all of the negativity and all of the different types of information that are coming in, we'd be a lot happier and a lot more productive and a lot more profitable society. And profitable, I don't even just mean by financially, I mean, there's a lot of ways, you know, to profit. Mm -hmm. um, and so that would be my good news story, is there are a lot of good news stories out there. I have a lot of clients right now that are just killing it in their spaces, mm -hmm. whether it be law, tech, um, energy even. And so um, I, I just encourage the, the viewers today, the listeners to, Look for the good news stories and, and that will give you hope. Nah, another good, thank you. That is great advice. And I agree, man, you know what? We, the world could use a lot more Tanya Ecklins. Uh, <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> That's very sweet of you, Catherine. <laughs> I mean it. I mean it. Tanya. <laughs> it's no wonder that you're a huge success in our city and our province. And I'm delighted that you and Chad have decided to stay here. And thank you for your contributions and your service always. Uh, well, thank you, Catherine. I, you know how I feel about you and how fond I am of you. And, and uh, I, I could say the same thing and will about you. You're just, yeah, a wonderful person to have in our city. Uh, thank you, Tanya. Everyone, Tanya Eklund, if you are selling or buying, she is the realtor that you want to use. She's high integrity, great communicator, and an amazing team. Thank you so much for joining us on Cast Track, and we'll see you next time.